Hello students, in today's topic let us learn about what is legacy software and what are software bits. Talking about legacy software, let us understand what is legacy. Legacy is something which you have got in inheritance. Say suppose you have got a property in inheritance from your grandfather, you have got a car from the inheritance of your father or the money that is called as legacy. Now what do you mean by legacy in terms of software? So in terms of software, legacy is nothing but something which is old but it is still in use which cannot be updated, okay. So it is satisfying all the needs successfully but it cannot be updated in future. That is called as the legacy software, okay. Now that you have understood what is a legacy software, let us look into the properties as to how to identify a software which is called as legacy, okay. Generally legacy softwares are called as old softwares which are still in use, okay. They are generally made or developed using the outdated technologies. Since they are used using the outdated technologies, you cannot update them in the near future, okay. The third point is they were developed with big investment. That means the companies have kept lot of amount to develop such type of softwares. The last point is the code is old, very less documentation. So you do not have many people who can understand that particular code. Okay, so these are the main reasons which will make us identify that the software that we are working on is a legacy software. Now let us see what are the different types of legacy softwares we have, right. The first software you have is the old operating systems. You have many companies or the healthcare sectors which are still using very outdated softwares, right. So those are called as old operating system. Example you can take is Windows XP. Okay, Windows XP is outdated but still there are some health uh, care systems which are still using such type of softwares. The next one you have is the mainframe systems. Now you have the banking sectors which are still using the old type of complex mainframe systems to run their banking sectors. That is also one type of legacy software. The next one you have is custom built applications. You can take examples of the factories, the manufacturers and all where the uh, equipments are running with the help of the software. So they are old equipments with the older softwares but since that company is being established in a longer range from very long time, they are still under use, okay. This is also one type of legacy software. The next type of legacy software is the outdated business applications. So you can take example of the retail marketing. If you have observed whenever you have gone to a a uh, retail market or the supermarket you have seen their software where they, it is reading the barcode, they are entering some code on the item and they and you get the bill related to that particular item. So they are still using this outdated uh, systems which is called as the legacy software. The last one you have is absolute databases. Some of the government sectors are still using very old outdated databases to maintain the information of say suppose the income tax returns of the employees, the unemployment details and all. So such type of uh, systems are also called as the legacy systems, okay. Now let us see who are the companies who are still using this legacy softwares, okay. The first one is government. Not only in India, America, Russia, these are the governments which are still using these legacy softwares, okay. Many of the applications used by this government sectors are developed using the COBOL. And in recent times in 2017, uh, many of uh, the IRS, that is the income tax written uh, software, you know faced a very important problem because it was not able to handle large amount of income tax returns. So it, since it was developed using the COBOL language, it was very uh, difficult for the companies or I mean the government sectors to rectify that particular problem. The next type of company which is using a legacy sector is the unemployment systems. So many of the government sectors maintain a software called as the unemployment systems where they give aid to the unemployment people as well as the financially ill people. During the COVID, this particular uh, software also play, uh, failed, you know, in maintaining all the details of these uh, people and all. The next one you have is the banking sectors. So banking sectors are also still using this old updated mainframe computers or the legacy softwares. So this is an uh, example of your uh, website related to the IRS which failed in 2017. Okay, the next one you have is the background checks. So many of the government investigation bureaus are still using this outdated legacy softwares. The next you have is the retailing. As I have told you, retail supermarkets are also using this legacy softwares. So this is an example of the retail website or you know the software that they are using, right. 
Now let us see why these companies are still using these legacy softwares. So there are many reasons. Talking about the first reason, fear of uncertainty. So since they are, they are thinking that this software is working very well, so why I need to update it? If I update, maybe I'll get a problem. Why to take a risk? So this is fear of uncertainty. The next one you have is budget constraints. Maybe they have used a lot of amount of budget to develop this particular software. Now the companies are not having that much income. So they don't want to update this particular software. The next one is operational risks. So they might think that uh, many of the healthcare companies or the banking sectors, they run 24 by 7. So, updation of the software might take around 2 to 3 days of stoppage of the software which they cannot afford. The next we have is custom solutions. So, many of the companies have built these softwares only for their purpose. So, if it is working fine, they don't want to develop it once again. The next one is training and transition. Many companies think that I need to train my employees more to whenever the, there is a change in the software. So that I cannot afford. So that is the reason they are not uh, going to change this particular legacy software. That is, These are the reasons. Now let us talk about what is legacy system. Up till now we have learned about legacy software. A combination of legacy software and a legacy hardware is called as legacy system. Okay. So there are certain healthcare uh, systems, hospital managements and all which are still using these legacy systems. They are using their old hardware system along with the old softwares like Windows XP and all. Okay, you can take one more example of IBM Lotus Notes. IBM used uh, Lotus Notes as the outdated legacy software to have a communication or the collaboration between their employees. Okay, it used to send emails to have connection with the employees. In, re in recent times, it has sold this particular software to HCA. Okay, so this is called as legacy system. Now, let us see what can be done to these legacy softwares. What all can I do? Okay, the first. The first thing that you can do is modernization. You can change the older software to the newer software, okay? Integration. You can connect the old software to the new systems, okay? Next is re-engineering. Instead of uh, changing the complete software, you can take just some modules of the software and change it. Next is replacement. You can replace some of the modules with the newer modules there. Maintenance. Let us keep the old software like that only. In the background, let us give support with the newer systems. Next is data migration. Completely shift the data from the older systems to the newer systems. Next is training and transition. Let us give some training whenever we have changed our software from old software to the new software. So these are the things we can do on the legacy system to convert it to a newer systems. Okay. Now let us talk about the last topic which is called as the software myth. Generally what do you mean by myth? Myth is nothing but a misconsumption okay, or a blind belief. That is called as myth. Whatever I think, whatever I see only is correct. That is called as myth. Now, what do you mean by software myth? They are people who are involved in the software development thinking that whatever they know, whatever they have learned, whatever they have read is only the correct procedure. Okay? They do not bother about whether it is going to give me the correct output or not. That is called a software myth. Now, generally in software engineering, we have the software myth in three perspectives. Management, customer and practitioner. Let us look in into these details. Let's talk about the first one, which is called as the management myth. So for a management of the company, what do they think about the software myth? So the first myth is we can speed up the project just by adding more programmers. So they think that let us start working with the software development using five programmers. Later on, if the customer is forcing us, we will add two or more programmers to fasten up the procedure of the project. But in reality, that is not at all possible. If you take new programmers into the middle of the project development, then it is going to, uh, you know, slow up the procedure only because you have to train them, right? The next myth you have is there is a book that has all the answers and procedures to the software development. So the management thinks that you have already books, I don't need to train my employees anything. But actually in reality, what happens? Books, they only give us the general ideas. But if you want to have a reality, then they have to have training to develop the projects. The next you have is we can use the same methods we have used 10 years ago to develop now. So as the technology is changing again and again, the trend is changing, the 10 years old procedure cannot work with the latest technology. 
So these are the three myths of the management. Now let's look at the myths of the customers. So what customers think? Just give a general idea, the details aren't important. So the customer thinks that whenever I come to a company to develop any project, giving a general idea would be fine. But in reality, that is not at all possible. You have to give every minute detail to the company to develop your particular product. Next you have is it is easy to make changes to the product at any time. So customer thinks that uh, at any moment of the project development, I can come and I can ask for the changes. But at what cost? It is going to cost in terms of budget as well as in terms of time also. So it's not that easy to do changes in the middle of the project development. Now talking about the myths under the practitioner. Practitioner is the developer. So what does the developer think? The first one is once the program works, the job is done. So he thinks that I have built a software, I have delivered it, my job is done. But in reality, you have to check whether all functionalities are working properly or not. Only then your job is done. Okay. The second myth is I can't judge the quality of the code until it's running. Okay. So, but in reality, what happens? You have to check the quality of the output at every stage of the project development. The last one is the only important deliverable is the working software. So the developer thinks that I once I have developed the software that is enough but in reality no along with the software you have to provide the documentation you have to provide the user manual also so these are the various software myths thank you